Hi, and welcome to a new tech talk. Recently, Apple announced that they will bring something called spatial audio to Apple Music, and that it's the biggest advancement ever in sound quality. Listening to a song in Dolby Atmos is like magic. In this tech talk, I want to present the three things that made it possible for Apple to release this amazing technology. Patents, music production tools, and 3D positioning sensors. I will also show you how we can use a 3D positioning system in AirPods Pro and AirPods Max to create a completely new type of applications. As always, my name is Johan Sandeblad, and I work with innovation projects for companies such as Volvo Cars, Yamaha, and Lego. Let's get rolling. There were actually two new features announced, lossless audio and spatial audio. The first feature, lossless audio, will be used to deliver over 75 million songs the way the artist created them in the studio, according to Apple. Most people, however, won't have the required equipment to listen to this pristine sound quality. All wireless headphones Apple sells today only support compressed audio, and even the top tier AirPods Max won't support lossless audio, even when connected by cable. The reason is that the cable converts the digital signal to analog and then back to digital using a fairly low quality converter. But if you're someone like me that has a good external sound card with decent speakers, then maybe you will hear a slight difference. But for most people, lossless audio will remain an extreme niche feature that I think most people will forget about in a few months. Spatial audio, on the other hand, is an interesting new feature in Apple Music. According to Apple, it's the biggest advancement ever in sound quality, and listening to a song in Dolby Atmos is like magic. The music comes from all around you and sounds incredible. So, what exactly is this magic spatial audio? If you're one of the lucky owners of AirPods Pro or AirPods Max, maybe you recently watched a movie on Netflix on your iPod or iPhone, and it sounded like the speech was coming straight from your screen. I know the first time I experienced it, I actually had to remove my AirPods Pro just to make sure it was they that produced the sound, because the feeling was that the sound came exactly from the iPad, even when I turned my head around. Apple Spatial Audio was first launched with iOS 14 in September 2020, but it wasn't until November 2020 when Netflix added support for it in shows like The Mandalorian, where most people could start experiencing it firsthand. Spatial audio works by delaying and modifying the sounds that enter each ear to create the illusion that the sound has a re real place in space. It does this by tracking every single movement of your head. So if your head turns left, the sound stage is rotated to the right, so the sound always sounds like the audio comes from the same location. When spatial audio is started on a mobile device, the center point is based on the user's current location. I have compiled a small test app on my iPhone here, so you can see how it works. When I start the app, the headphones detect when I look up and down, left and right, and even tilt my head left and right. But if I start the app with my head facing to the left, and then turn it back, it shows incorrectly in the app. The same goes for when you watch a movie on Netflix. If you press play and accidentally rotate your head when you start the movie, the center point will not be centered at your screen. Since neither AirPods Pro nor AirPods Max have ultra wideband, it's not possible for the headphones to know where the iPhone or iPad is located. Apple has been researching spatial audio for many years now and have filed many patents related to not only to the technology itself but also the practical use of it. One of the more recent patents was approved in 2020, focusing on a way to automatically recenter the soundstage. As I just mentioned, if you need to move your iPad or, uh, or your head around, you first need to pause the audio, move your head, and then restart it. When you're in a car or an airplane, this patent filed by Apple makes the mobile device also detect the movement and will not believe you turn your head when the car turned, if the mobile device turned at the same time. Without this patent, spatial audio would be practically useless in a car or an airplane. Uh, but how come Apple released spatial audio now, and not last year? The answer is that the right tools required to produce music in Dolby Atmos were not published until last year. Four years ago, in 2017, Dolby contacted the world-famous Capitol Studios and asked them to help them develop a new standard for music, Dolby Atmos Music. Over a period of three years, they worked on a large amount of mixes for multiple artists, testing out different ways to position sounds and effects in a three-dimensional space. 
What makes Dolby Atmos so interesting is that it supports up to 128 different sound channels that can be routed to 64 different speakers. Dolby Atmos also supports something called height channels, which allows composers to place objects not only around the listener, but also above and below. The first tool that really made a difference for producing music for Dolby Atmos was released a year ago called Dolby Atmos Music Panner. It allows musicians to use the regular DAW, such as Ableton Live, and not only position sounds in 3D space, but also move them around in a cyclic pattern using keyframes. Dolby has simplified an uh, example of this on the homepage, but the possibilities with this tool is nearly endless. So it wasn't until April 2020 when regular mastering engineers could really start to explore Dolby Atmos music for real using the Dolby Atmos music panel. The difference between a great experience and magical experience lies in the 3D positioning system used by the AirPods Pro and AirPods Max. Currently, there are several companies that have provided virtual cinema solutions, as well as companies who provide 3D head tracking solutions. But what makes special audio in Apple Music unique is that it uses both of these in combination. To create a virtual soundstage with 64 speakers in a regular pair of headphones, each sound being played back needs to be both delayed and modified to create the illusion that the sound has a place in space. This is not something new and has been used by numerous manufacturers such as Logitech since 2015 in gaming headsets like the Artemis Spectrum. The Logitech headset processes an audio stream with pro uh, positional audio such as Dolby Surround and positions each element in 3D space around the listener. However, even if you move your head around, uh, sounds coming from the front left will still be in your relative front left. So they do not provide the magical experience when a sound seems to be glued in a specific place in the room. When it comes to tracking a person's head and presenting a virtual sound stage, one of the first most marketed 3D positioning sound systems is the Waves NX. I have one of them here and I still use it on a really daily basis in my music studio. The Waves NX system consists of two parts, room simulations and a hardware tracker. Using advanced measuring equipment, Waves have, me have measured the acoustics of some of the best recording studios in the world. They have measured exactly how sound travels not only directly from the speaker to your head, but also how the indirect reflections travel around the room before you they reach your head. They then use this as a filter to process the audio played back, so it sounds exactly that you're like you're sitting in the same studio, but you're using headphones in your home. The Waves NX system also consists of a hardware tracker with built-in gyro and accelerometer, which you place upon your headphones. The tracker then connects using Bluetooth to your computer, and what makes Waves NX so good is that the room simulations have gotten so much better over the years, and the most recent simulation of Ocean Waves Studios is simply outstanding. Uh, the Wave software uh, will also have you measure your head circumference and the distance between your ear canals so it can use extreme precision in the algorithms that modify the sound for your specific head. The result is simply outstanding. It really sounds like you're sitting right in that expensive music studio and it has to be heard to be believed. But still, all the sound you hear seems to be coming from two speakers in front of you. It does not use Dolby Atmos. What Apple has done with Spatial Audio is to merge these two features, a fantastic virtual soundstage and advanced 3D positioning to give the evolution that sounds move around you in the room you're in. And even if you rotate, look up or down or tilt your head, the sounds will stay in place and move around in the same physical space. It will be an experience very hard to describe that really has to be experienced, similar to virtual reality, but even more engaging. When I first tested out different app concepts for head tracking on the AirPods Pro, uh, it struck me that I had seen this kind of use case before. It was at Mobile World Congress 2010, where NTT Docomo showcased their eye-controlled earphones. The use case was simple. When you're stuck tight on the subway and can't move your hands, how can you skip tracks? NTT Docomo invented earphones that could detect eye movements using electrodes, so to skip a track, you will simply look right, center, and right, and center. And this is something that could very easily be added to mobile apps, for example, by shaking your head, left, right, left, right. You could skip tracks if your hands are full with kids, dogs, or groceries. I haven't seen any applications using this yet, but hey, Spotify, maybe you could add this as a future release. It will really help me out with my daily dog walks. I believe 
Dolby Atmos music will truly be a revolution in music history and it will mark the step when we moved from a heavily sidechain compressed stereo signal to an uncompressed experience in Dolby Atmos. It will be an experience that will be very hard to describe, so you better prepare to lend your AirPods Pro to your friends once the feature is out. Apple will launch the update the same month as their regular developer conference, so maybe it will be even more features launched at the same time. That was all from me today, and as always, I hope you learned something. If you like this kind of deep dives into new technologies, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, and bye for now.